Hey guys, Dave with the Right Stuff Brake Company. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to adjust the parking brake on this caliper. Look, this caliper is used in a lot of our four wheel brake conversion kits. It is originally designed by General Motors and served a lot of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of daily drivers faithfully. It's a fairly complicated caliper inside, but it's one that's very robust and will serve you well for a long time if it's set up properly when you install it. We do get some questions on how to adjust this rear parking brake from time to time. Even though we have instructions that come with each kit, we thought we'd do a video that will help explain how to properly set the tension, but also the adjustments on this parking brake lever. So in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and cover the adjustments so you can do it right the first time and have the brake performance that you expect out of your rear or your four-wheel disc brake conversion kit and have a fully functioning parking brake. So stay tuned. Now, before we get started, there's a couple of things that you should know before you get started in installing or adjusting this parking brake. First of all, that this parking brake is meant to, when we adjust it, we're gonna adjust it dry, which means we're not gonna have any brake fluid in it, okay? Don't hook up your brake lines yet to your actual caliper because it'll just create a little bit of a mess possibly. Number two, there are videos out there that show you removing the actual spring here and also the, this arm to adjust this actual parking brake. Look, you can do it that way, but it's not necessary. And not only is it not necessary, but if you do that while it's on your workbench and not on the actual car itself with brake pads and a rotor installed, you can actually release, there's springs inside of this actual mechanism that can release, meaning either this can push out or the piston can push out. So the adjustment that we're gonna make on this today, we are not removing this arm or this spring. GM didn't design it to be adjusted that way. Look, it can be done that way and there's people that have had success doing it, but it's really, you're taking more apart than you need to. And it's really a pretty straightforward procedure. The other thing that you need to know about these rear calipers, and most calipers in general, is that General Motors designed these to have a certain amount of pad pressure against the rotor itself. You're gonna have a certain amount of drag. It's designed that way. It's what gives you that good brake feel. Now, by adjusting these brake calipers, and more specifically this parking brake, it has a lot to do with how your brake pedal actually feels. Look, you can get a spongy feel if this is not adjusted properly, so that's why it's critical that we go through this video and understand really how to properly adjust this thing. And to do this, really what you're gonna need is you're gonna need the caliper mounted on your in your car, you're gonna need the brake pads in the actual caliper itself, and you're gonna need your rotor installed. I suggest putting a lug nut on your rotor to make sure that you hold it tight to the actual rear axle assembly. So they'll go ahead and get started. The only real tool you're gonna need is gonna be a pair of vice grips. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the vice grips onto the actual brake arm itself and much like when you release your parking brake cable you hear that arm snap we're going to go ahead and do that with this one as well we're going to go ahead and put the device grips onto the brake arm itself make sure it's tight you don't want it to fall off with the parking brake cable not installed yet so all we've got is the caliper installed on the rear axle we've got the brake pads in the in the caliper and we've got the rotor on there and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and activate this thing and you can see that it has quite a bit of play. There's a, what we're trying to get on this actual caliper itself is there's a stop on this caliper right here. And when I pull this brake arm down, you're gonna see that this gap is substantial between the stop and the arm itself. That's way too much gap. What we're trying to achieve is somewhere between an eighth, maximum a quarter inch of gap between this brake arm and this brake stop. So what you wanna do after you've ratcheted this thing down is you simply wanna let go of your vice grip and let it snap back. Okay, we're gonna do this a couple of more times. And what we're gonna find is this gap is gonna to continue to close as we do that. So let's go ahead and pull it down, snap it back, pull it down, snap it back. And what it's doing as we're doing it, there's a helix screw that allows that piston to actually rotate out and self-adjust, if you will. It's bringing the pad closer to the actual rotor. So we're gonna keep doing this, snapping it, and you do this a couple of times, and what you're gonna find is the gap between the arm and the stop is gonna get smaller and smaller as you do this. So continue to do that until the gap is roughly an eighth of an inch minimum, quarter of an inch maximum, and really it won't go any further than an eighth of an inch because it has an internal limiter that won't allow you to adjust it too tight. So we'll go ahead and keep doing that until we get to the point where we get to that adjustment. 
To get the emergency brake piston and arm adju properly adjusted on this new assembly, it took me about 10 to 15 snaps on the actual emergency brake arm with the vice grip attached to it. Look guys, you can do this, but the setup is critical to not only how the emergency brake performs, but also how your brakes feel. Also, we got the proper clearance, which is anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch between the arm itself, the emergency brake arm and the stop, but you wanna make sure that the gap is the same side to side on your vehicle at the rear of it. We want the pistons to be adjusted properly because what it does ultimately is adjust to that inboard brake pad. Guys, we appreciate you watching this video and hopefully it's answered any questions you might have when it comes time to adjusting the rear emergency brake on any of our four-wheel disc brake conversion kits. If you have further questions, reach out to us on our website at getthisbrakes.com or on the 1-800 number shown on the screen. We appreciate your business. We hope you enjoy your brakes and make sure you do the proper adjustments on your emergency brake system before you bleed them, before you add fluid to them. That way, everything works exactly the way it's designed.